Hello, this is a, a, a special bonus video uh, for stretching. There are three benefits. There's lots of benefits to stretching, but the most, the most significant benefit that I would tell my clients at this point is for stretching is to elongate the muscles to prevent injury. If you are uh, going to throw a baseball and you are stretching back to throw that baseball, if your back and your deltoid muscles are flexible, you're able to throw the ball further, therefore utilizing your muscle strength better. It also increases energy. Think about uh, how good you feel in the first thing in the morning and you were to reach back and stretch and it just brings in, gets muscle flowing back to those muscles, or it gets blood flowing back to those muscles and gets you feeling better and gets you kind of woke up a little bit. It also prevents injury. If you were to slip and fall, if you had some flexibility in your legs or hamstrings and your hips, of course the impact is going to hurt, but you may not tear a muscle or a ligament or a tendon because they're more pliable, they're more flexible. There is a, a big debate about stretching before a workout, stretching before a run, stretching before you go bike riding. And my theory is to not do this. And the reason I believe this is because your muscles are very pliable and very, can be very flexible, uh, meaning that there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of, um, it, they're, they're pliable, they're stretchy, like a rubber band. If you were to take a rubber band and put it in your, in your car and it's cold overnight and then immediately pull that rubber band out and try to stretch it to its capacity, it's probably going to snap or it's certainly not going to stretch to its full capacity. Now, warm it up in your hands, get it good and warm, blow on it, get it, get it good and, and, and feeling good, and then now stretch it. It's not going to snap. Think of your muscles that same way. So please do not do this video if you have not warmed up your body. These are some exercises for after doing the videos. These are exercises for after you've ridden your bike or run on the treadmill or, or done, done any exercise that has warmed up your muscles, okay? I'm going to show you some proper uh, exercise or some stretches that we do in class. And if you can do any variation of this, depending on what you've done as far as your workout goes, okay? So this is a deep lunge stretch. Uh, we start with one leg forward, and if you've watched my videos, you've probably heard me talk about how to do an appropriate lunge to make sure that your, your knee is not over your toes. It's the same thing as when you're stretching. You're still supporting your weight. So please make sure that when you stretch, this is what you're stretching here is your quad and your hip flexors and a little bit of your hamstring. So make sure that you are not like this trying to stretch because that, we want the weight of your body on your foot, okay? So stretch, keep your torso back. This is not a deep lunge stretch. Here, torso back, stretches up through your abs, really opens up that hip flexor. Hips, shoulders, and our back, and hamstrings, those muscle groups are the ones that can become so incredibly tight and tense from the lack of exercise and lack of stretching that they really can screw our bodies up. So please make sure that if you're doing any leg exercises, biking, running, treadmills, stair steppers, stair climbers, any of those ellipticals, that you're really stretching out these large muscle groups, your hamstrings, your quads, your butt, all your glutes, your, and open up those hips, your hip flexors, and your lower back. Those things can really make a big difference as far as injury prevention goes and also pain. So that deep lunge stretch. Now if you've worked your calves, here's a good one. Bring up that toe and drop the heel in the back. So your feet have to be really far apart to stretch this. Fingertips on the ground do help with this stretch. And this is stretching my calf, my hamstring here, a little bit of my quad and my calf back there. Okay, then what you do is we drop it and twist it. So we are stretching lower back here. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn around so you can see me. So you're stretching this way. Using your arm as a little bit of leverage to really get that stretch. You'll feel some tightness in your back probably. So make sure that you are breathing. Don't hold your breath. Breathe through the stretch. Okay, and again, my leg is straight over my toe torso is up, okay? The other one, this is called the pigeon stretch for those of you that are in yoga. And best way to get into this is from a down dog position. Turn that leg in and on its side and then sit down right on top of it. 
Okay, and for a little bit of a deeper stretch, you can go all the way down and stretch it here. This stretches your uh, iliotibial band, your glute, all your glutes, medius, maximus, and minimus. A little bit of your quad stretch. It's a very, very good stretch. If you can get in this position, it's a very, very good stretch for your hips um, and your glutes. Okay, now what would you do is you would then do the other leg. Okay. Um, Another really good stretch for hamstrings that we do in class, feet apart and down in the middle. Okay, you will notice that sometimes if your back and hamstrings are so tight that you can't even touch the ground, the more you stretch, the closer you will get to the ground, then you'll be able to see that you're making progress. From this stretch, do not, please do not over straighten your legs, your knees. If you're pushing your knees back, there's a tendon behind here that you will feel the next day if you overstretch that. So a little tiny bend in your knees and be able to really stretch that lower back and those hamstrings. Okay, and then what I tell my clients is then lace your fingers, put them around your knee just to support your knee and try to push your chest instead of, instead of your head, instead of doing this, is try to bring your chest in towards your knee. Okay, and then do that on both sides. Okay? Alright, a good down dog stretch. If you have worked, if you have worked your upper back or your shoulders, uh, and even the middle of your back is a good stretch called the down dog or downward facing dog as a yoga term. And what you do your hands are flat on the ground, feet are back, and what you do is you push. So your heels are up a little bit, so you're getting a calf stretch, a hamstring stretch, upper back, shoulders, and push your head through your shoulders and you'll really feel that upper back and middle back stretch. This is a really, really good stretch. From here, we'll go straight down, knees together, feet together, and down here. Push and push those, push those armpits right to the ground. And you'll feel that'll get right up between your shoulder blades, middle of your back. This is a really good stretch. And from here, to go into a hyperextension with your back to stretch, Bring your hips down, feet flat, so your laces are face down on the, on the mat. Stretch. And this is a good one. You can do this one back to back. I'll show you just how this one goes. If you have back problems, but you've been cleared from your position to do exercise, put your toes up and push. This is a good, good stretching routine to do after your workout. Here. And then drop those knees, and then here. And then back up to this one, which is called Cobra. Here. Okay. You know what I just realized? That red light's not on. Okay. All right. Sorry, I was just checking to make sure the camera was on because the red light was on. Okay, so from this one to this one, right? And then put your toes down and push up to this. Very, very good stretches. Okay. Now, um... Here's a good one for shoulders. Here, lace your fingers. Your palms stay facing you. Up, okay. Push, and what you're going to do is you're going to bring your hands, you're going to keep your torso straight, and you're going to bring your hands past your head. Now, if you have shoulder issues or rotator cuff issues, you might want to check with your doctor if this stretch is okay for you because this, really this will really stretch your shoulders good. And then from here, I want you to release the tension. Bring your hands back, pull. We've all done these in school. You know, if you were in gym class or if you did any stretching in any kind of sports, we always did these. These are good to stretch the rear deltoid stretch. And once you get done, because you're really tensing the muscle here, is to allow that blood flow to go back in. So a little bit, just let it go a little bit. Pull it back up. Now this one, palm is against your shoulder blade. Use a little bit of force, pulling your elbow, okay? Release it and pull. Good. Okay, now this one's a little bit tricky, so bat hands are back to back, thumbs are down, cross your hands, okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to push. And what this does is open up between your scaps, between your scapular, and really opens up the upper back. This is a really, really good stretch. Okay, again, this is a lot of back stretching, a lot of shoulder and back stretches. Okay, now just release your hands. What you're going to do is you're going to lead with your thumbs. 
and you're going to keep your hands, keep your arms level with your shoulders. Don't drop your shoulder. Don't drop your hands. Keep them level, and then try to turn your hands upward like that and push. This will get your biceps and your anterior deltoids, your front of your shoulder. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. Okay. All right, now this is another little tricky one, but this is going to get your upper trap and your sternocleidomastoid, this neck muscle right here. So if you have neck issues, if you spend a lot of time sitting at the computer and you're doing a lot of this, this will help to strengthen, but to stretch these muscles out, relieve a lot of, relieve a lot of tension. When people come up behind you and they rub your shoulders and you're like, oh, you can almost do this yourself. So let's take your right hand and you're going to put it in your left back pocket. So go like this, here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to push this shoulder down, right shoulder down, and head goes over to the left. Just like that. Open this up. Stretch. Open that shoulder right up. Okay? So the hand that is actually the one that's going behind is the shoulder that goes down. So you're just making a space right here. Okay? Now do the same thing. Left hand goes in the opposite back pocket. Push that shoulder down and lean that head over. Try not to twist your head too much. All you're doing is look straight ahead, and you're just going to put your ear on your shoulder. Twist. Good. Okay. So, the three benefits to stretching. Prevent injury. That's the number one thing. You have back pain, you could have tight muscles. You have back pain, you could have tight hamstrings, and that could be causing your back pain. It is, it brings some energy to the body, creates some blood flow, and it also allows you to utilize your strength. If you're a softball player and you go to take off, after you've hit the ball, you go to take off to, front, to first base, you don't have flexibility in your hamstrings and your quads, you're feeling it by the time you round first base. Stretch out, but please, 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 if you take anything from this video, warm up first. Warm up first. Number one, warm up. Number two, stretch. Number three, workout. Number four, stretch. Have a great day.